Hello, good afternoon. It's been a long day, hasn't it? So I thought I'd start with a film so you could all just relax a little bit. Um, here we go. Thank you. It's hard to talk about movement without actually showing some people dancing. Um, so this is a film reel drawn from dance projects that happen in hospital and with people in the community living with dementia. So why dance in hospital? Well, we have a need to be well. We have a need to connect with ourselves, with others, with our environment. We have a need to make sense of our lives and have narratives that we can share with others, even in hospital. A terrible sadness for the elderly who find themselves hospitalized is the terror that they have reached the end of the road, that they have become unresolvable problems, that they have no control over their lives anymore. This sadness adversely affects the ability to function and to heal. It's hard to get better when you're depressed, unreasonably and incomprehensibly ill, and you're alone. Good hospital practice is increasingly about delivering health programs that encourage patients to find alternative and additional ways to healing and health, and about powerful collaboration between the healthcare professionals and individual initiative. In bringing together the world of dance and the world of the hospital, the common factors are humans, bodies, health and well-being. One of the best things about dance is everyone can do it, perhaps not to an ideal or standard they feel to be good enough or right or beautiful, but most certainly we all have the potential to access body and movement as long as we have breath and a pulse. Dance includes a wide range of somatic practices and dance forms. It is also one of the simplest art forms as it really only requires a body. Dance can happen anywhere, at any stage and at any age of life. In September 2014, I spent four weeks in the United States chasing the sun from New York across to California, San Francisco. I was visiting three hospitals, researching how their wellness and arts programs serve patients, caregivers, the community of the hospital and family. Complementing the hospital work, I met dance practitioners who work in the community with elderly populations. So I met individual dance practitioners to experience ways in which dance is used to engage with and benefit older people. I met and danced with people living with dementia, Parkinson's and MS, as well as people living with cancer and drug addiction. 
I met and danced with healthy older people who danced to maintain health and well-being, as well as a sense of purpose and meaning in their lives. I was thinking about how the techniques and principles that dancers work with are transferable to all people with and without illness. Is it? Melodic, but good. I hope I get one more minute for that. Okay. That one or this one? Okay. Dance Moves is a small Cambridge based company dedicated to promoting well being. Is that better? And health? Yeah? Good. In hospital and in the community through movement and dance programs. In September 2013, we devised a. Um, pilot dance project working with the Head of Arts and the Falls Coordinator at uh, Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge. For 10 weeks we ran an integrated and inclusive dance sessions involving patients from the Department of Medicine for the Elderly and the Neuro Rehabilitation Ward. We welcomed all staff to bring their patients and we welcomed family members as well. The pilot project has now grown into weekly sessions across four wards and we've just received funding for another year. So the sessions allow patients and staff alike the opportunity to experience and learn the creative, playful and healing processes involved in movement and dance. Using imagery, metaphor and of course music, patients and staff alike become more flexible, more open, more fluid, nourished energized, connected, and focused. Moods shift, bodies release pain, tension, paranoia, anxiety. Not many people can resist the voice of Nat King Cole, Elvis, the restorative order of Bach, and the still important heartfeltness of the war songs. Pain relief, stress reduction, relaxation, better hospital coping skills, enhanced hospital experiences and healthier life choices. These are the tools that every patient needs. I'm really drying up. Importantly, these are the same tools that can help hospital staff cope with the demands of pressurized work loads. So by focusing on the positive potential of how we can move, of how we want to move, sidestepping assessment of what is wrong with us, we open ourselves to the wisdom of the body-mind connection and our body's innate ability to heal. So step by step, we find our way to moving more fully, more generously, oh, thank you very much, and with vigor and vitality. So, oh, that's much better. Working with older patients, I witnessed tired, weakened and frail bodies come back to life again. I witnessed the energy come back into the eyes, smiles light up faces, voices open in song and in conversation. A key focus of the sessions is to facilitate opportunities for the staff to bring their patients into a non-clinical and non-medicalized space. Through the sessions, we remember who we are and we reconnect through the pleasure of sharing our stories. Creating dances with the people we look after provides a richness and a resilience into the caring relationship. So, motivation, engagement, resilience and understanding of holistic health, these are empowering and imperative abilities for people to have especially the elderly, who commonly suffer from depression, disorientation, apathy when entering hospital, particularly when they stay for a long time. It is important to find a means whereby they can build positive relationships with their health carers and regain a sense of their value as people. So, we dance because dance is joyous. Life is a dance and dance is life. Thank you very much.